So last year at this time of year, in October, it's mid-October right now, it's the uh, third week of October. So last year around this time, Kelly hadn't started joining me up here yet, so the wildlife kind of had the run of the place. So I did have a lot of raccoons hanging around, I had that bear pretty much the entire month of October hanging around back down there and uh, back over here as well. There's two of them, it ended up being two of them. But um, they never did actually come up to the cabin as far as I could tell. I do have cameras set up around the cabin and also mud in spots that I would be able to see tracks in. So the bears never came up to the cabin. I had moose walking right by here quite a few times, tracks right alongside the cabin, although I was usually sleeping or I wasn't here, so I never did see them. And then uh, raccoons were here quite often, and they were up until I think we had a few of the springs, some tracks out on the on the uh, pathway at least. But nothing here this year around the cabin, I guess because we're here all the time now, especially with Callie chasing them around or at least leaving her scent around. So no bears here at the cabin, no raccoons that I can see, and uh, I think the marten comes around and any mice that I catch, he ends up, I put them in one spot and they're gone the next morning all the time. So. I expect that's a Martin, but for some reason they're staying away from the kitchen. Nothing is really coming in here. That being said, I just cleaned this pike, and that's a lot of scent, and it's very irresistible to things like raccoons. So what I think I will do with the remains, um, typically I burn all my, my garbage, my food scraps, or bury them, but I think what I'll do is I'll bring these down to the stream, and I'm not sure if the otters are still around. Probably are. At least coming through the area, so I'll put that down there and hopefully they can have a, a good meal of, of fresh pike. I'm going to get in the cabin, I think. It's getting pretty cold out, very damp, and uh, get a fire going. And I think what I'll probably do is come back out here and cook the fish, though, instead of filling the cabin with the smell of frying fish. And then I'll get a stew going on the stove for the next couple of days' meals. Hands are cold, so I'm rubbing them together. Work a little bit for it. Sit. Sit, please. Good hand. Chant. Take your hand. Okay, good girl. Okay, go ahead.
Tomorrow, I'm going to start the uh, first couple of courses on the log cabin sauna, bathhouse, whatever we're calling it. My wife tells me not to call it a log cabin, even though that's what it is, because it's confusing because I've built this cabin and I'll be building another one later. But it's basically what it is it's a log cabin until I do the interior, at which point it becomes a sauna or a bathhouse. <clears throat> so, my point is that I need all my log cabin building tools and I need them sharp so got them all together I haven't used all of them together like this since what last September October really that long yeah I guess, no yeah I guess so October November I guess so some of them are really critical so how, how I'm doing the notches this time, um, <clears throat> well similar to last time, <coughs> I used a hand saw, uh, a cross cut saw to cut down and through the notches. Actually what I'll do is I'll film another video tomorrow, a full tool video showing all the tools that I'm going to be using to build this next cabin. Um, some of the things are right here right now, but things that are missing are the cross cut saw or the, the uh, yeah the cross cut saw um, spoke shave or draw knife oh the scribe um, log scribe so it's probably going to be the most uh, unique thing I guess that uh, most people will, wouldn't have seen um, if you didn't if you're doing log building. Um, so I'll show you show you that in detail, uh, and then this thing as well. This is the what's called a slick. It's like a just a great big chisel, and I use it for it's used more for timber framing with square joints. But there's quite a few things that I used it for, including uh, some of the square joints that I made. So I need to sharpen all of these things up and recoat them with oil by the looks of it starting to rust in a couple of spots most of the tools are so I'll uh, get to work on that now Toronto blacksmith the guy who made that awesome uh, hewing axe for me which I'll also be using on this project and um, he's he made me a little Viking sort of um, I would call it a camp axe probably longer handle bearded axe so a little bit um, longer face but what I wanted and asked him to make me is just something just basically like a hatchet something that I can use in tight for putting the notches or knocking the notches out once I put the saw cuts in so I like that so it's a nice small hatchet what I found is with the longer handle there's a risk of when you're swinging it the handle hits off of something and then it kind of bucks it so it could be quite dangerous so 
much uh, safer for tight work um, to have something short handled like this more of a hatchet so that's what I'll be using like I said to notch out the the notches the saddle notches that sit on the corners uh, the locking joint that that uh, locks the two corners two logs together in the corner so nice little hatchet it's uh, got a hardened pole so I can also use it for pounding nails if I really wanted to but I wouldn't want to do that with such a nice hatchet but I will use it to pound um, I don't know wood stakes and stuff like that so what I would do want to do want to do with it what I'm going to do with it right now is put a a leather collar on here just to protect it from over strikes or strikes that go through the wood and and then still over strike because it comes through and it hits the wood right here and it tends to break the handle so I like to put a, a leather collar on there to protect it I'll drill a hole in that too so I can put a lanyard on it and also so I can hang it on the wall so I thank um, Paul for that very nice little axe I'll show you that in action over the next several weeks this log scribe is going to be, like I said, I'll do another video showing it in detail. This log scribe is something that finishes off every single uh, saddle notch. So it's important that that thing is razor sharp. Very frustrating if it's not. And then there's a little nick out of that. So I'm probably going to have to square that edge up again and then re-grind it. Which is going to take me a little bit of time. So I'm not going to show all that. At least not tonight. So let's start with a collar, I think, for this thing. to wet that leather to stretch it so they can get a nice tight fit on there. Not find my needles. So.
Anyway, tune in to the next video, I think. Um, probably be the next video. And I'll show you all these tools outside in better lighting and in more detail. And I'll give you a little demonstration on each of them. Um, so, I'm going to get to uh, work here. So I'll probably shut the camera off and I'll see you in the next video. So thanks for watching this one. I look forward to seeing you guys up here at the cabin next time, but also see um, show you the new cabin, the, the log cabin sauna, and how that's going. And try to get lots of work done on that as quickly as possible. So see you next time. Take care.